Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I'm going to show you how to make these shaped bowl cozies. So previously I've done a video using these flat bowl cozies. So I make them as flat cozies and then attach some press studs to them so that you can put them together and pop your bowls in. I've had quite a few people ask how I go about making the shaped ones and I will go and show you how to make these shaped ones. I'm going to use the same 10 inch squares on these ones as I've used on the original video that I did some time ago and I'll have a bit of a chat with you at the end of it as to which ones I prefer and why. Hang around and I'll show you how to make these bowl cozies. What I've got here are two 10 inch squares of fabric. You can do these bowl cozies in any size you like, really. It's, um, it'll de depend on the size of the bowls that you've got. And even if you just want to make them for little peanuts and things, you can make them smaller if you like. We need two pieces of fabric, uh, both 10 inches. And I've fused some cotton fusible batting onto the wrong side of both of the fabrics. Now, if you don't have access to fusible cotton fabric, you can go and quilt this instead and that will attach the batting onto your fabric and keep that nice and secure. To quilt it, it's just a matter of doing a crosshatch line straight across both diagonals. And if we do that on both pieces of fabric, then we can just take it to the machine and using a longer stitch length, just stitch it down and that'll stop any of the fabric from shifting. If you want to really quilt this heavily, you can go and do a whole heap of crosshatched lines going in both directions and then quilt that heavily and then we can put it together. For this, I'm just going to do a cross along both pieces of fabric and with my other ones, I'm just going to leave them unquilted because they've already been fused to the fabric. It's simply a matter of just stitching straight down the diagonal and coming off and then stitching across the other. You don't have to back stitch. And rather than taking your work off and starting on the other corner, just do the next one. So you can do a whole batch of these all at once. Once you have all of your pieces quilted the way you like or fused on if that's what you're using, we can go and start folding these up and cut cutting the intersections out. Take your fabric piece and fold it in half and we're going to measure one inch from the center fold and we're going up two inches from the raw edge. So from that line there, the one inch line to the two inches, you'll draw a diagonal line and you'll cut that straight out. You'll do the same thing on all four folds. So we'll do this side as well. Come up two inches from the raw edge, one inch from the fold. Join those sections draw it by drawing a diagonal line. And we'll cut that out and cut that out while it's on the fold. When you've done that, take it to the other side, fold it in half again, and we'll do exactly the same thing. Here we'll measure one inch and come up two and snip it off. That's what your pattern is going to look like, and we will do this for the back and front pieces of all of our uh, bowl cozies. Now, it's a little bit tedious to go and do this uh, on every single item, so we're going to create a template instead. What I've got here is just a piece of hard plastic. It's a template plastic, so you can get that in your quilt stores. Uh, and it is actually just called template plastic. Or you can use a piece of cardboard or any heavy card stock, whatever you like for templates. I've marked this at five inches so it's five inches all the way around and this is my quarter template for the 10 inch square from the side edge we're going to measure one inch from the edge 
and two inches from the outside edge. And we'll do the same on the other side. So we've got one inch from the outside edge here, and then two inches. These outside edges here are going to be the fold, and these are going to be the uh, top stitched or finished edges. Draw a diagonal line from the two marks that you've just made, and that will be the uh, template that we've got. Now you can also go and do a rounded edge on your fabric as well, so you can have more of a leaf shape. If you want a rounded edge, let's go with the Rock Legends CD and we'll just place that on the corner there and we'll curve that edge. We can go and cut this out now and make our template. So we'll cut out along here when you've cut out all of your fabric we need to go and close the darts on every single piece take your fabric and place it right side together and that opening that we've just cut open we're going to close up now i'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way throughout so all I'm going to be doing is closing this up and stitching that down a quarter of an inch. And I will go and clip all my pieces together and then stitch everything down all at once. It'll just help with my time saving efforts. This is pretty much how the bowl will look later. With our diagonal pieces clip together. We just want to take it to the machine and stitch it down a quarter of an inch. And if you're doing a whole batch of these, rather than stopping your work and going to the next corner, take the next piece of fabric, fold the edges together. You don't even have to clip it. It's that easy. And start the next one. And I'm just going to go ahead and do all of my pieces. And that is it. I've gone and sewn up the diagonal curve on all of my bowls and I'm ready to now fit them inside each other. So you can see chain piecing your fabric together is much quicker in the long run if you're sewing big batches of anything. All right, the bowls are all done on their corners. And what we can do now is take one of each colour and we're going to place them right sides together. So we want the patterns facing each other and we're going to place them inside, one inside the other and we'll match up the diagonals, the seams just there. And what we will do is have one seam going in one direction and the other seam going in the opposite direction. This will help reduce some of the bulk and it helps the fabric snap together or lock in place. Do that at all four intersections. It doesn't matter which way each side goes, but it's easier if you have them in opposing directions. And then we want to match up, up our curves. Once we've clipped or pinned all the edges together, just find a section that you'd like to leave open. And we're going to start stitching here. We'll back stitch, go all the way around come back to just past your seam here and we're going to leave this section open so there's probably oh, about one and a half to two inches here we don't need much room to turn these through they're quite soft uh, the fabric's only light and it'll turn itself through nicely so leave an opening just there I'll go and pin all my other pieces together and then I'll batch sew everything together again I have all my bowl cozies clipped together and I'm going to do all four of them all at once. Remember when you start and stop to back stitch, and we're going to leave an opening of about an inch and a half so that we can turn our work through. Quarter of an inch all the way around. When you get to about one and a half inches from the end, back stitch and finish your work. 
this little opening is here and we can turn our bag through but I'm going to go and do the rest of them before I do that. When you've stitched the bags all the way around before we turn them through we want to just trim the curves. We don't want to have too much bulk here because it'll make it too difficult to uh, turn it through and have everything looking nice. So we're just going to trim this close to the edge. We're going to do this instead of clipping the curves. And the only reason I'm doing this instead of clipping the curves is because there's a lot of, lot of work there. When you're doing a whole batch of them, it's actually a lot quicker to do this than to have to snip into every curve. When you've done that, just come to where the point goes in and you can clip that on each of the four intersections. That will just help relax the fabric as you're turning it around the right way. So that's the only place where I'll actually snip it. And we can turn it right way around. When you've clipped the edges and turn all your bags through, we can close up this opening here. We're going to top stitch all the way around the entire bowl and then all we need to do is give it a really good press and job's done. So we'll do all four of these together. It doesn't matter where you start sewing but you do want to make sure that your fabrics are distributed evenly on the top and the bottom. You don't want to be doing your top stitching and find that the bottom fabric, the orange fabric, is sticking too far out at the top. It's just not going to look very professional. So try and roll it so that you can have the side seam on the side. There we go. I've done all four bowl cozies and you can turn them around any which way you like. So if you like, you can have the green on the inside, the orange on the outside. doesn't matter. They're completely reversible. They'll work exactly the same both ways. I hope you've enjoyed that video. These shaped bowl cozies are very, very easy to make, but so are the ones that I made previously in another video. So what's my opinion? Look, I have to say I prefer these ones. Uh, I like the, these flat ones, and I'll pop a link up here for you to compare the two, how, how I make them. I prefer the flat ones because all it is is just a matter of sewing your pieces of fabric together, stitching straight around, closing it up, and putting some snaps in and the job's done. The other thing too is that when we're storing these they store flat so I can I can fold them up put them on top of the microwave they can just sit there or they can lie flat. The other thing that we can do with these is to use them as kind of a trivet on the dining table we just put it straight on the table and you can put something hot over the top of it and it'll help protect your table. So I have to say without a doubt I would much rather have these bowl cozies than these ones here. But I know that there are people out there that love these. And look, there's nothing wrong with them. They're a nice shape. I do find that for me, sewing to sell, these are a little bit more tedious. It doesn't matter that they've got a curved edge. That whether I have a curved edge on these or not, it doesn't make much difference. But it's having to fold the fabric, find your edges, cut them into points and then sew the points up and quilt them if necessary. It's all extra work that I don't need to do. It's far quicker for me to put a few snaps in on the sides than it is to sew up the sides and then have them shaped. The other thing too is as a shaped bowl, they're always gonna sit like that. So when I'm storing them, I've gotta find cupboard space to go and put these and my kitchen's just not big enough to have a whole bunch of fabric bowls sitting there waiting for another bowl to be put into them. So for me, I would much rather have half a dozen of these sitting on top of each other above my microwave and they store nice and flat. So that's my story. Whether you like the shaped bowl cozy or the flat one, completely up to you. I will sell these in the shop for $10. Uh, I sell these ones in the shop for $10 already, so I can't really see myself charging any extra for them. That, and that's just another reason why I would use these over these for sewing to sell. It's time management. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video regardless of whether you like the flat ones or the shaped ones. Do you like shaped ones? Which ones do you prefer? Let me know. I also hope you enjoyed me showing you how to make your own template. I, I really do love to um, work out how something goes together and then just make quick templates for, for them. It'll just make my job a lot easier when I go decide I want to make a great big batch of something. So templates are always a really, really good thing to have. I will leave you to ponder which of these bulk suit you the best. Catch you next time.